Renal fascia is a connective tissue layer that surrounds the kidney. So we will discuss it in detail regarding the definition, the old concept of renal fascia, the new concept of renal fascia, and some clinical aspects. So this will be our <coughs> points of interest today. So first of all, I have drawn uh, the horizontal section of uh, lumbar region where kidneys are located. This is the right kidney. Uh, this is the right kidney, and this is the left kidney. Right superior, inferior. Uh, you can also write upper, lower. Right and so this is my left and this is my right side. So the first layer that I have drawn around kidney is this green layer. This is called the uh, the renal capsule. Capsule on both sides you can see this is the renal capsule. This is very closely attached to the kidney. Outer to this renal capsule there is the layer of fats. This yellow color layer of fats This is called the para <clears throat> Perinephric fat Now outside this perinephric fat There is another layer of uh, fascia which is called renal fascia now, uh, there are two concepts for, uh, regarding the renal fascia, old concept and new concept. So, <clears throat> if we draw here the vertebral column, body, the large, spine, transverse process. <clears throat> here is the psoas muscle, the quadratus lumborum. Rector spiny We know that this is the psoas fascia The fascia that covers the psoas muscle is the psoas fascia Then is the fascia of the quadratus lumborum This fascia will split like this and then it will also surround the rectus spiny. So, <clears throat> this is making the thoracolumbar fascia. Now, this vas fascia, then the quadratus lumborum fascia, it will extend forward. This layer of fascia will now move forward. And it will continue as the layer of fascia transfer cells. On both sides there is fascia transfer cells. Now at this point where psoas fascia is moving forward as the fascia of quadratus lumborum. At this point in the old concept uh, the Gray's anatomy mentions that this fascia now splits into another layer. Second layer. This layer then moves andromedae and another layer of renal according to the old concept the renal fascia is a double layer membrane double layer fascia bilaminated means that it has a separate anterior as well as the posterior layer the layer that I have on is the posterior layer and uh, books mention this posterior layer of renal fascia in the old concept as the fascia of serota. Similarly, there is an anterior layer which starts from the midline. This is midline and this layer extends backwards and medial. 
both of these layers at this point will meet and they will be attached to the renal fascia through this double layer which is called the lateral funnel fascia so renal fascia has got two layers a posterior layer which is derived from the psoas fascia it splits and then moves anteriorly and the anterior layer this is the anterior layer that starts from the midline this is known as fascia of zakar kandal fascia of zakar kandal <clears throat> this anterior layer will move posteriorly it moves anteriorly at this point they will meet and they will be attached to a fascia transversalis through this double layer fascia which is called lateral conal fascia so this is the <clears throat> old concept regarding the renal fascia if we study it in a horizontal section similarly this uh, this is my right my this is my right side then this will be this is the left side on the left side same thing will happen the anterior rear layer start from the midline it will move posteriorly so as fascia splits and give off a layer it will move posteriorly and then these both layers will meet and will join to the fascia transversalis as the lateral conal fascia <clears throat> outside this layer there will be another layer of fats in this compartment this layer of fat is now called the paranephric fat actually these layers of fats are providing support to the kidneys so that they may they may not uh fall down or you know that they will uh, act as a shock absorber so you move around you bump in a lot of things and you experience a lot of bumps and jolts when you walk so these layers of fats are actually acting as a shock absorber so there will not be any trauma to the kidneys so this is the function of this fat and if this fat uh, for for example if uh, specifically this perinephric fats uh, is absent for example in the people uh, who lose weight the thin and lean people and uh, the people who lose weight this layer of fats actually become very thin and when it will become very thin you know i have told you this layer of fat is actually supporting the kidneys so that kidneys may not float they may not fall down or they may not experience bumps and jolts so this thin layer of fat will cause the kidneys to float in the abdominal cavity so this condition is known as nephroptosis in which due to the loss of this fat layer the kidneys are some like something like floating in the abdominal cavity and they can be damaged if they, there is a trauma so this is the clinical regarding this perinephric fat so now i will discuss the old concept in the sagittal section so you can also observe how it is going to attach to the surrounding structures this was actually the horizontal section in which we have studied the renal fascia now i will tell you about the vertical section so how will renal fascia appear in vertical section in the old concept now i will tell you regarding the vertical section of the kidney and the vertical tracing of the renal fascia earlier we have studied the horizontal and now i will tell you the vertical similarly in this vertical plane you will find that there will be one anterior layer which is called the fascia of the carpal and the posterior layer is called fascia zerota now this anterior layer and posterior layer they will ascend and at the level of the suprarenal gland they will surround the suprarenal like this before surrounding the suprarenal gland 
the both anterior and the posterior layer will give off a septum. This is a septum. This septum will separate the suprarenal from the kidney. And what both anterior and the posterior layer, like they have met on the horizontal tracing, they will meet here. And these both layers will now be continuous with the diaphragmatic fascia. This green layer is the diaphragmatic fascia. So they will become continuous with the diaphragmatic fascia. We were discussing that what is the clinical significance of this septum that is separating kidney from the uh, suprarenal. The one is the nephrectomy. That suprarenal will be there if uh, the kidney is even removed because we know that suprarenal uh, uh, is very responsible for secreting number of hormones aldosterone, epinephrine, norepinephrine these hormones have very crucial and uh, very important role in our body so this is a blessing for us that if kidney is removed supra suprarenal will remain there so in nephrectomy suprarenal will in its place intact and will getting support from the diaphragmatic fascia by the way of these two layers so the second significance uh, is that if there is an infection of kidney, the chances for the spread of infection is only downwards. Uh, I have to, I will tell you why. The infection will not move uh, towards the right side, it will not move towards the left side, neither it will move upward because of this septum. So the infection of kidney will not spread up. So this is the second significance of this septum. Now uh, we have the, uh, the uh, studied it in the vertical section in above. These two layers will also descend down, and at the lower pole of the kidney, the posterior layer, the here will be the iliacus muscle. This is your iliac crest, this white color. So this there will be the fascia iliaca. So this posterior layer will be joining with the fascia iliaca. So the posterior layer descended down at the lower pole of the kidney, it become, became continuous with the fascia iliaca. And the anterior layer, it will be attached to the parietal peritoneum. This is parietal peritoneum. It will become attached to the parietal peritoneum. So you can notice that the renal fascia has an opening inferiorly and through this opening if there is an abscess in the kidney it will descend down into the pelvis. This is the region of pelvis you know. This is your iliac crest and the iliacus muscle and uh, the, the anteriorly there will be the pelvic brim uh, oh sorry the pubic symphysis there will be the pelvic brim. So this area is the pelvis. So okay, infection is getting down into the pelvis. Neither it will move up, nor it will move right, nor it will move left. It, it will only be uh, traveling in the pelvis. So this is the old concept of the renal fascia. Uh, we have studied in the horizontal uh, section as well, as well as the vertical section.